Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. President Trump signing an executive order to end the separation of immigrant children from their parents. What we know this morning about what will happen to those thousands of children already separated. And summer is here. I'm tracking just how warm temperatures will get where you live today. Chula Vista is helping the government determine rules for commercial drones, how the program could boost the city's economy. It is June 21st. Happy first day of summer on Virginia Shaw. I'm Jason Martinez, and the sun kind of taking its sweet little time coming out in some areas. Yeah, even though we're going to see the sunshine the longest today, we're really not going to because the marine layer is with us this morning. You can see the cloudy skies over Carlsbad. And as we look down at the marine layer covering El Cajon this morning, yeah, it's blanketing most of the county. It's actually right up into our foothills and where it's touching the mountains, it is forming fog. So we do have some visibility problems in Ramona. In fact, just within the last 10 minutes, it has dropped off to zero. So big old goose egg this morning again in Ramona, the 67 Wildcat Canyon Road. If that's your route this morning, it's going to be probably pretty foggy. Once you get down to the main roads, you should be a little bit better. Your 10 hour day planner takes us to the 70s along our coast. Inland neighborhoods topping off in the 80s. Most inland neighborhoods clearing out by about 11 a.m., but some stubborn clouds may linger at a few beaches. I'll pinpoint how warm it's going to be where you live today when I come back in just nine minutes. Kalina? Well, it has been light and slow this morning in certain parts, but right now the 805 actually looks like it's somewhat improving from what I just saw about 15 minutes or so ago. 805 northbound, we still have a little bit of a slow spot before where this Caltrans camera is. Overall, though, if we go out to our 10 News Live traffic tracker, you'll see the slowing and it'll only take you about 11 minutes to get through this yellow portion. So that's between National City heading toward the uh, Mission Valley area. So just keep that in mind as you head out, but still very light compared to what we usually see this time of the morning. Five freeway northbound that slowing down through National City will take you about 13 minutes leaving the 905 heading toward the 94 and your commute into Coronado still very slow this morning. This is about an eight minute ride coming off the five guys. Thank you, Kalina. Well, now that President Trump has signed an executive order allowing immigrant families to stay together, what does that mean for everyone going forward? This will likely impact immigration facilities in San Diego, and 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala is live at one of them in El Cajon. And Mimi, what does this mean for the children already at the centers? So Jason, Virginia, there are 63 kids at this specific location here in El Cajon, and right now it doesn't look like the president's order is going to affect them. It will, however, affect the incoming cases as well as likely have an impact in court. It could happen this way, for example. Yes, now we have reunified the family, but now mom or dad are going to have a swift and speedy trial. It's not going to be six months worth of evidentiary process. It might be two weeks. That's immigration attorney Esther Valdez, who deals with cases like this. The zero tolerance policy does remain in place for immigrant families going forward, but now kids will likely go into these DOD or ICE facilities with their parents for the duration of the immigration proceedings. President Trump signed that executive order that puts a stop to the separation of families who cross into the U.S. illegally, but it came 75 days after more than 3,200 kids were already separated from their parents. The president said he just did not like the sight or the feeling of families being torn apart, but said we will continue to have very strong borders. This center here in El Cajon is always at or near capacity and roughly 10% of the kids inside were in fact separated from their parents at the border, but the lot, uh, a lot of them did make it here on their own. Right now, the families that had been separated will not be immediately reunited. It's still unclear what exactly is going to happen next, but of course, we will continue to follow this and keep you updated. For now, we're live in El Cajon. Mimi Alcala, 10 News. Mimi, thank you very much. The president's executive order isn't stopping some San Diegans from protesting the immigration policy this weekend anyway. They spent the day making signs at the Sherman Heights Community Center. The messages coming from unifying children and parents that refugees should be treated like people, not prisoners. The rally starts at 10 a.m. on Saturday near the Civic Center, and we've posted the full text of the president's executive order on 10news.com. It's also where you'll find updates on the immigration debate. We want to take you to some breaking news in El Cajon, where a man was hit by an MTS bus. Let's get to 10 News photojournalist Paul Andrig live on the scene in our 10 News breaking news tracker. What do you know, Paul? You can see the police have the road blocked off here. We're on East Madison at Walter, which is just east of 2nd Avenue. You can see the bus here. Police tell us that this man in his, uh, looked to be in his 40s, wandered out into the street or was 
potentially trying to cross the street, walked right in front of this bus, and you can just see the damage that was done uh, to the windshield. Now, there were passengers on that bus. None of those passengers were injured. Uh, they all got off and are heading off to other buses. That victim that was struck has been rushed unconscious yeah. to Sharp Memorial Hospital. They are saying with life-threatening injuries. So it's not known if he was a transient or if uh, it's just, uh, try, uh, just someone just trying to cross the street here on their way to work. But they're going to have the, uh, the street blocked off here east of 2nd Avenue for the next several hours. Mm -hmm. Again, life-threatening injuries on this victim. Yeah, it's a tragic start to this day for so many people mm. involved here. Paul, thank you very much. Let's get to Renee Nelson. Yeah, we've got breaking news here in the Live Center. An arrest has been made in the shooting death of this young rapper here. Uh, this is the person that was arrested. This is a 22 year old Derek Williams. He's charged with first degree murder. This is just two days after rapper XX Extension was killed. Uh, he was in Florida at a motorcycle dealership at the time when he was shot and killed by two men that approached his car. Uh, the rapper was also punched on stage back in uh, or earlier this year when he was performing at a show in North Park. Virginia, Jason. All right. Thank you, Renee. So as we look at ways to help people make it in San Diego, we continue to watch the battle over affordable housing in Encinitas. Neighbors argued well past 11 last night to try to keep many of those projects from being approved. Lowering the cost of living is a desperate need in our county. The city wants to rezone several areas for affordable housing, and those areas are all sort of listed, those little specks of red there. That's on this map, and that's causing a lot of contention. This is really the urbanization what otherwise has been a sleepy coastal town. Um, the residents are very unhappy. I can tell you what it's like to have to step forward and basically ask the city that I've lived in since 1974 where I raised my kids and where I've devoted my life to please make a place for me. I would like to retire and the question is, you know, where can I find to do that? City officials say if they don't clear the way for more affordable housing, it'll lead to more legal issues. In fact, Encinitas has already been sued several times over its lack of affordable housing. City Council has to finalize a plan by August 10th, and it'll then go to the November ballot. We want to hear from you. What are your challenges and concerns about making it in San Diego? Send us an email to tips at 10news.com or message us on our 10 News Facebook page. Now at 10 News Morning Original, new reporting first at 6. The federal government handpicked San Diego and Chula Vista last month to help figure out the future of commercial drones. Before drones start flying overhead with packages and food deliveries, though, Chula Vista is helping develop some new rules for the sky. Yeah, and 10 News reporter Jared Ahrens is live in Chula Vista this morning to show us how the program could bring more money and jobs to town. Good morning, Jared. Good morning, Jason, Virginia. This whole area behind me, 375 acres, stretches over that little hill and almost all the way down to the border. It's now an official FAA drone testing site. It's one of only 10 in the nation, and that means in addition to drones, Chula Vista's economy is about to take off. As drones start to fill the sky. Daryl Anunciado is making sure businesses know what they can and can't do. His company, Action Drone Inc., is leading an FAA project in Chula Vista to write regulations for drones. It basically opened up the door for us. That same week, we got that FAA designated test site. Big companies um, started talking to us and actually started visiting us. Companies like GE, Siemens, the Navy, Caltrans, all wanting to figure out how to use drones. We are ready. The project and the FAA designation means pilots and engineers will start uh, coming to Chula Vista for training and testing. That's a huge economic boost for the city. All we need to do right now with those companies is just add water and then come in here and start doing business and, and, uh, uh, and really making the drone industry take off. There's no telling how many jobs or people it will add, but Council Member Mike Diaz says it fits perfectly with Chula Vista's long-term plans to become a tech hub. The new millennia development already under construction can provide housing, office space, and more that companies will need. I think we have positioned ourselves uh, to not only welcome the industry, the drone industry, but all other types of technology industries. Flying into the future, writing the rules to help others do the same. Companies are going to start thinking that San Diego or Chula Vista is a place to actually find solutions uh, that has to deal with drones. 
drones aren't the only futuristic technology that Chula Vista is testing right now. They're also the test site for driverless cars and city leaders believe that makes them the only city in the nation to be testing both drones and driverless cars at the same time. Live in Chula Vista, Jared Aarons, 10 News. Thank you, Jared. Well, happening right now, first day of summer is here. This is the longest day of the year, and what better way to celebrate than with the many activities around town today? And take a look right here in North Park, summer solstice day. That's a party with live music, a beer garden, Liberty Station. They're having an art show, Harbor Island, a sunset picnic. And that's not all. There's so much more. If you want to get a complete list, check out all the details. Just go to 10news.com because, you know, why not? get out and celebrate today. Yeah, yeah. long like, day, huh? Yeah, long day. 14 hours, 18 minutes of sunshine. Well, we're going to see a lot of clouds, <laughs> but it technically we'll be out the there. The sun is there. The sun is there. It's just above this are cloudy conditions. As we look towards the Del Mar Fairgrounds, if you are headed out to the fair today, about 70 degrees this afternoon, but most of the day we're actually going to be in the 60s, mid 60s as we head into this evening. We will see partial and limited clearing along our coastline, so Del Mar may be one of those few spots that get stuck in the clouds a little bit longer today. Generally in the 70s along our coastline, mostly in the 80s inland, 85 for Escondido, 77 for La Mesa 72 in Chula Vista today and Ramona at 87 and it is Thursday so the Oceanside Sunset Market is going on temperatures about 69 down to 65 degrees during the event. I will have a look at our warmer day tomorrow in about eight minutes. Kalina how's it going on the roadways? You know what they're still looking pretty good right now. We are getting reports though of a problem on the 56 right at the 5 connector which I'll get to in just a second but right now on the 15 at Miramar Road still nice and light. So if you usually take this, you are in luck because it looks like this. So not too bad if you want to hit the road right now or maybe wait a little bit. 10 News Live Traffic Tracker takes us out to the problem that I just mentioned. Looks like it's a roll of carpet that's actually uh, rolling across the entire roadway there. So people are slowing down, trying to see what's going on. So if you usually take the 56 and transition onto the 5, you'll see that in the way. 5 southbound though at a 21 minute ride, so not too bad. We still have 805 slowing and the 5 freeway slowing down. I'll have those commute times coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you very much. The son of a famous local bar owner accused in a deadly crash. Why he's not facing any charge even though he wasn't supposed to be behind the wheel. Why bullets were flying from a burning car as troopers pulled a man to safety. Their reaction to this incredibly close call. Plus the new offer from the nation's largest movie theater chain rivaling the popular movie pass. It is 6.15 and the son of the owner of McPee's, a popular bar in Coronado, was accused of a deadly crash. This happened in Mexico earlier this month. Officials have identified the driver of that Hummer involved as Gregory McPartland Jr. Witnesses say he tried to take off after running over a local construction worker. He was trying to run and um, all these uh, construction workers were, um, they chased him and they put him back in the, in the Hummer. Now, investigators say McPartland Jr. had taken a friend's car without permission. Mexican authorities also said the case has already gone through the judge and a settlement was made. McPartland Jr. is no longer in jail. When 10 News went to his dad's bar yesterday to ask about this case, we were kicked off. We did discover McPartland Jr. had been convicted of DUIs before, but investigators were not able to determine if he was under the influence during this most recent crash. So in what experts are saying is a California first, a criminal investigation is underway after a great white shark washed ashore in Northern California Sunday. People were snapping photos of the shark. Somebody even took a selfie that some have found disturbing. I just want to warn you, the shark has some cuts, but there were no serious external signs of trauma. A necropsy was done yesterday, but the results are not being released. Experts say intentionally killing a great white is a state and federal crime because they are a protected species. Today, the funeral will be held for the fashion designer Kate Spade. Friends and family are gathering in Kansas City, her hometown. Spade took her own life earlier this month, and now the brand she co-founded with her husband is donating more than a million dollars to mental health awareness causes, and some of that money will come in the form of matching public donations to the suicide crisis text line. That text line is on, the, on our screen right now if you need help. This is wild. So this is new video showing state troopers with body cameras on. They're running toward this car. You can see it's engulfed in flames. All of a sudden, bullets start flying all over the place. Did you get hit? 
Moments before those bullets started flying, the troopers did manage to pull the driver. You can see to safety happened near Las Vegas Saturday. The car had crashed into a barrier along a highway, burst into flames instantly. Things got so hot, there was ammo in the car and it started to ignite. Once everything settled down and it's a little while later, you think, oh my God, what just happened? Everybody's okay. Investigators, though, are looking into whether this was a DUI. The largest movie theater chain in the country is creating a service to rival MoviePass, and it drops next week. AMC has unveiled AMC Stubbs A-List. It's a 1995 monthly ticket service that lets members see up to three movies per week. Who has that kind of time? Its competitor, MoviePass, costs $10 a month, but that limits users to one movie a day, and each movie can only be seen once. AMC's program kicks off next Tuesday. We wish we had that kind I of know. time. Do you remember April the giraffe? The live stream of her expecting and then giving birth last year to son Tajiri had more than a million people watching worldwide. Well, she may be pregnant again. Ooh. The Animal Adventure Park in New York pushed a video of April saying they have some exciting news to share, but they didn't actually share it. The park says they have been keeping samples from April to determine whether she's pregnant and that they have sent them off to a lab for confirmation. Hmm. Back for another one, huh? I know, people just loved watching Yeah, her. absolutely. And it's World Draft Day. We'll add that to the list of days All that things day are going today. on today. Yeah. National Selfie Day, mm -hmm. first day of summer, yeah. June 21st. Yeah. <laughs> All right, as you're heading out, it is pretty cloudy this morning as we look towards La Jolla. Correct. The waves crashing down yeah. below. An overcast start to our morning for most of us. But you can see where the edge of those clouds is hitting up on the mountains. That's where we are dealing with a little bit of fog. So right in Ramona, you can see that's kind of like where the clouds are hitting the ground so fog forming and uh, for the last 10 30 minutes actually 10 to 20 minutes or so visibility has de been down to zero so if you are traveling in Ramona leave time for travel you're going to likely run into that fog and it's pretty bad but once you get down to the main freeways you should be okay Escondido and Poway visibility between three and five miles but there may be some pockets in between Ramona Poway and Escondido where the visibility is a little worse another sticky day up and down the east coast I mean it's what 9 a.m. on the east coast 81 degrees in Raleigh already 79 in DC it's going to be a sticky day there and it's going to be hot in our deserts an excessive heat warning starting at 11 a.m. today lasting through 8 p.m. tomorrow but we're not alone in the heat so there's that a lot of the desert southwest is covered in these pinks indicating those heat warnings even up near San Francisco they're on a heat watch so the heat peaks tomorrow so the second longest day of the year, I suppose you could say, is going to be a very warm one. 73 degrees along our coastline, so temperatures just above normal along our coast. Our marine layer clouds are going to be moderating our temperatures at the coast. Uneven clearing today, better clearing tomorrow, and then more persistent clouds coming through on Saturday. Slower clearing for our inland neighborhoods this weekend in the low 80s after being up to 87 degrees, near 90 degrees for some of the hottest spots tomorrow. The mountains in the 90s through tomorrow, and tomorrow 113 in the deserts, the hottest day. Kalina? Well, we're seeing a really tough ride right now on the five freeway heading northbound. This is out of the South Bay. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're going to be traveling right at East Street is where we're seeing a lot of the traffic starting to build. But overall, it actually starts off uh, further southbound as you head out of the South Bay. So heading out to the 10 News I'm traffic tracker so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the five freeway. The slowing actually starts off more so uh, just past the 905 and then stays slow in pockets all the way up toward the 94. I know you can't really see some of the yellow building over there, but overall commute time will take you about 14 minutes through this stretch heading into Coronado still very slow. Now it's at a 10 minute ride coming off the five heading into uh, the naval base there and then the 805 northbound between the 54 and the eight. That'll take you about 11 minutes. Virginia. Thank you, Kalina. Decked by a hot dog, a woman recovering after she took a flying Frank to the face during a Phillies game. The stiff penalties you could now face for trying to take a selfie with the lava in Hawaii.